So this has been an amazing one. We've talked to Ariel kind of about finding the story. How did you come into the project working with him? Um, you know, was it, did he come to you specifically? Was, do you think he felt the role was always kind of yours as he was creating the project? Uh, it's interesting how I came to be involved with this because I had absolutely no idea who Kuklinski was and I didn't know Ariel very well. I had met him uh, at some social functions here and there um, and we had some mutual friends and you know one time I we, we were talking and uh, he said that he was working on this and um, uh, you know he said you know, I've always wanted to work with you, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, but it wasn't something I was pursuing. It certainly wasn't like my idea. I wasn't looking around thinking, oh, I need to make a movie about Richard Kuklinski. Who's, who's going to help me do it? Do you, um, once you came on board, did you kind of, I know there's been a couple, a book and some actual video footage of Kuklinski. Did you study that much? Did you kind of want to bring your own, your own take to it? Well, the research I did for the role um, was was not incredibly extensive. I did start reading a book, uh, one of the books about Kuklinski, and then Ariel said I was reading the wrong one. I should read the other one. And then I realized uh, that they're probably both accurate and inaccurate, and that um, it's probably really hard to know the truth at all about what happened, because I, I don't think Kuklinski uh, told the truth all the time. So, um, and then there's the interview, the famous interview on HBO, and I was able to get uh, an unedited, unedited version of that uh, interview. It's over 20 hours long, I think, and uh, I would just watch it uh, whenever I could. Uh, uh, when I was working on the film, I'd spend you know hours sitting and watching it, and just trying to figure out how his mind worked. But it's a very, you know, helpful thing to have. Uh, an inter interview is probably the best thing to, to learn how somebody talks and moves and all that. How did, you, uh, how did you find the balance between kind of the two sides that Kuklinski had, between Family Man and obviously Ruthless Killer? Well, yeah, we had, you know, one of the challenges is to, you know, find the balance between the two sides of his existence, his family life and his professional life. And um, uh, Ariel was actually uh, very helpful in this regard because the way he scheduled the film, we kind of compartmentalized it where we started with uh, the DeMeo scenes, the stuff with Ray and David Schwimmer and uh, John Pendemilia. And then we moved into the Chris Evans stuff, which kind of kicks it up a notch. And then Winona came. And from then on, we focused more on the family stuff. So I actually had the luxury of kind of separating it out a little bit, which is more than Ku Klinsky ever had. He had to do it all on the same day. I don't know how he did it. Do you uh, tell, talk a little bit about, like, tell us a little bit about Richard's relationship with Deborah? Yeah, the. Relationship between Richard and Deborah is obviously uh, very complicated, and 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 it's hard to know exactly what it was. I think there was a I think there was some genuine love and tenderness between them. You know, Richard says that she was the only woman he was ever in love with his whole life. He didn't even he didn't have a wandering eye. He didn't could care less about any other woman, that she she was the one. Um, now, I'm sure uh, it wasn't all wine and roses all the time, you know. Um, and some people have even said that maybe the film is avoiding certain aspects of that. But we felt like we just wanted to show the, the tenderness uh, between them in order to make the distance between the family life and the professional life as wide as possible, you know. If he's being all violent and angry at home, then going out and being violent and angry, there's not much 
distance, there's not much of a gap there. It just kind of winds up being repetitive. But, um, you know, it's also, I'm sure, and Winona's probably said this as well, that it's hard to believe that, that she was completely oblivious to what he did. Um, but every time I've seen her interviewed, um, she seems very sincere. Um, and even if she did know a little something about it, I, I doubt there's much she really could have done about it. It makes you wonder how much kind of denial was going on. Yeah. Time. But I think, you know, once you start saying, uh, oh, those people are really in denial, you're throwing the old stones in the glass house. There's a lot of denial in the water <laughs> these days. Um, what do you think Winona brought to the role of Deborah? She, Winona brought such a, a delicacy and, and fragility to the role that I, I thought was really important because I think a stereotypical way to go with the part would have been, you know, like tough New Jersey housewife mob, you know, like brassy and doesn't take any shit from anybody, you know, and. And, but that's not who this woman was. She was very, she, when you see interviews with her, she seems very, very delicate and, and, and fragile. And, and, and Winona, I think, captured that uh, beautifully uh, in her portrayal.